The biggest cut I had to make in Streetball Quest was going from 3v3 to 1v1, but that was convenient and it actually streamlined the game and the creative system. The hardest change I had to make was one I also previously mentioned, going from an open world exploration style to more of a dungeon crawl style exploration that maintains a sense of adventure. Here's what I stopped myself from saying in my first devlog. So I had to figure out how am I going to do that and maintain kind of uh, the encounters, the exploration, um, the the basketball feel. One one v one is is a lot more intimate, but it's more doable. Uh, and then the encounters, the exploration, that can still be done, and it has been done no better than by the game Iron Helm. So this is where I went for inspiration. I went to the game Iron Helm. And I thought, okay, this, I actually feel like I'm in a world in this game. And all I'm doing is flipping two cards, choosing one of them to look at. And if I don't like that one, I can risk the second one. And each card has two options. I totally got this uh, mechanic from Iron Helm and this mechanic works perfectly. So I think my encounters deck is a little bit different than the Iron Helm one, but I love the draw to reveal one mechanic that was really probably, I don't know if anyone did it before Iron Helm, but he did it to perfection in Iron Helm. So I realized, scrap the entire board, scrap the tiles, uh, the extra cards, you know, 50 plus cards for 50 plus, you know, tiles, that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm cutting the game down tremendously and it's going to be more doable with an encounter stack that gets shuffled and every time you're getting new experiences. So after coming to like more of a realistic vision of the game to put it in a box about this size, I actually thought, you know, wait a minute, what if I can get it in a box even smaller? How can I make this game even more streamlined? How can I make it to where you're going as fast as you can and then when you're done, you're done, you have to restart. And that is right around the time, in fact, I probably would have thought of that after this happened, but that's right around the time that the Game Crafter put out a meta progression game contest. All right, let me stop right there. In case you are wondering, yes, I did enter Street Ball Quest into a contest and that actually helped me uh, become motivated to get a decent prototype together in a short time, but it wasn't that simple and we will get to that in another video. So what I did with Street Ball Quest is I thought, I, I'm already thinking about this concept. Can this be a meta progression game? Can it be go, 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 go until you die then you restart and I thought, well, that's how Grifflands works. That's how Slay the Spire works. That's how uh, a lot of games work where you can kind of carry some progress. And so I thought, okay, what kind of progress are we carrying here? So I, I retooled it and I called it, at first I called it like Streetball Quest Run the Gauntlet or something like that. And I was just like, there's no exploration. Doing basketball matches and you're leveling up and then you, you, you go until you lose or you die and then you can't go anymore. But then I thought, no, 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 I have to have the exploration and the exploration style from Iron Helm is streamlined enough to where I should be able to actually add exploration. And that's when it hit me. I can do just, you do some exploration. After a few explorations, you find the match that you're going, then you win or lose that match. And let's say you win, then you do the exploration again. So you're always exploring, you're always heading to your next match. So you get that feeling if you're going on an adventure to the next opponent to face, but you're not actually traversing a huge board. You're not flipping a million tokens. You don't have to sort through a deck and find card number 52 because that would take too much space and probably too much time. So that's when it hit me, I can do that. And as soon as you die in the game, or if you get defeated, you start over, but you get to keep some of your progress. So once I decided to go the meta progression route, which was largely because of the contest, which we will get to in another video, it really helps me finalize what the full game of Street Ball Quest and the full finished prototype would actually end up becoming. So I took all of the exploration, all of the, the 3v3 down to 1v1, all the systems, the way that the creative system worked, the way that the basketball system worked, that all stayed from then on. Then I just had to figure out what does it mean to have the meta progression, to have a part when you lose or when you die. So every time you lose or every time you die, that's when the meta progression does come in. And what that allowed me to do was kind of just figure out what I wanted to happen after that. So once I figured out the exploration, the Iron Helm style with the draw to reveal one mechanic that is working perfectly. And of course I streamlined it down to 1v1 so that the creative system and the basketball matches were working pretty much perfectly. What I had to decide is how am I going to make it a meta progression game? What am I going to do every single time you lose or every single time you die or lose all of your HP? What happens next? 
So the gist of it is you are going to get stronger and be able to carry some progress from your previous game into your next game. So you would start all the way over from the beginning against a level one opponent, but you would get to keep a few things with you and you would also get to level up in a sense because you would be able to start with instead of 40 total stat points distributed across your creative skills, you would now have 41. And then if you died a second time, that means you would have 42. So ideally you get stronger and stronger until you are going to become really strong and that level five opponent is probably going to be not as strong as you. You're probably going to be able to dominate at some point, weirdly, if you keep losing. Uh, but it does. it is pretty challenging and hard to win without losing once or twice. In fact, I would say you're not going to beat Street Ball Quest without dying at least twice. And I'd be surprised. You'd be pretty lucky. You'd have to get a lot of good items and a lot of good uh, card draws. And you'd have to have a really kind of easy mode style build, which we'll get into in a later video. But it would be really hard to beat Street Ball Quest without dying at least two or three times. So with the exploration streamlined into a deck-based adventure dungeon crawl type system, that was working great. And it was working great with meta progression as well, because with that style, you are never going to get the same encounters at the same time um, twice. So it fits into the philosophy that you're always experiencing something different, which I wanted for Street Ball Quest. I wanted each playthrough to feel differently. Here's actually what's gonna happen once you do die or become defeated by any of your opponents during your street ball quest. When you die, you start over. You discard any flaws in your deck. There are flaws in this game, which we will get to in a different devlog. You can reset your rep. You're gonna go back down to zero on rep and on infamy, and you're gonna reset your HP. It doesn't matter if it was at one or it doesn't matter if it was higher than what your default was. Uh, but you're going to reset it to whatever your toughness indicates uh, for when you first started your create a player process. You get to choose one item card that you acquired on your previous journey if you had one that, that you wanted to keep. And you don't have to do this, but you can. It comes in very handy if you've got a good item. We will get to items in a future video. You also get to gain 20 credits on top of keeping every credit that you earned during your previous run so you're going to have the opportunity to have a ton of credits on your second and third playthrough depending on how it went your first time you're also going to get to keep one of your cards that you acquired in your previous journey from leveling up if applicable like if you didn't level up then don't worry about this but you get to pick one of the cards that's like a better card so you get to keep one of those cards through your second playthrough you'll also be able to keep any perks that you acquired throughout your playthrough, the previous playthrough, that you still meet the requirements for. So if you have enough agility or enough intelligence, you can keep any perks that were required. Some of them have level requirements, so if you got really high and got a perk and then died, you'd probably have to get rid of those. And of course, you gain one extra stat point, so you're already gonna be starting a little bit stronger. Of course, if you wanna completely start over without taking any of your meta progression, if you wanna completely rebuild your player and just completely try again in a totally different way, you can totally do that as well. And one more caveat, if you were for any reason able to remove certain cards from your decks other than flaws, um, if you wrote, like removed a, a, a crossover or a layup that you didn't really want, you didn't want to draw whenever you were choosing moves, you actually do get that inserted back into your deck. So your deck is completely reset from flaws and reset from lost starter cards, except for the card that you choose to keep if you choose to do so from one of your leveling up card draws. So this is really how Street Ball Quest ended up taking its shape and kind of becoming a final prototype design. A design that I was able to enter into a contest, as I mentioned, and also something that I would be comfortable, you know, still having the original philosophy, my original vision for the design of the game. Everything still remains. I didn't originally intend for it to be a meta progression game, uh, but the contest inspired me to try it out. And I really liked how it ended up being. It was also very much inspired by stuff like Grifflands and Slate Inspire. For more, follow me on Twitter if you're interested in uh, continuing chatting with me. And of course, leave a comment about any questions you might have about Street Ball Quest. In the next few videos, we'll be getting into some more details regarding the art style, um, the items deck as well, and of course, some information about the contest, and we'll actually start to be displaying and playing the game as well. Like and subscribe. <laughs>